Hello there and welcome to a very, very long video. Of course, you know exactly how long this is. You've clicked on it. You've seen the little number in the corner. But today we've got over 50 new sets coming out today, March 1st, along with some gift with purchases that I'm going to quickly get out of the way for you. So you don't have to wait throughout the video. And like with my rooms and releases that you might have seen, wait to the end for the all important GWPs. Though for the Lego Make and Takes that will be happening next weekend and in fact this weekend starting tomorrow you will have to check out the rooms and releases. I've got to leave you something to go check out that video but today there are three gift with purchases. Technically two bundles but there's three different sets up for grabs. The first two are the poly bags, the new Animal Crossing poly bag that I will be picking up at some point to review here on the channel and a Lego Friends poly bag. Both quite good poly bags that will be given away with $50, £45 or whatever that relates to in your currency on Friends, Animal Crossing, Creator, City and Dreams sets. So across all of them sets you can mix and match as long as you're spending that threshold. They will be given away from the 1st to 10th of March and similarly the 1st to 10th of March is introducing a Houses of the World Part 2 perhaps but this time it's to do with stores. Specifically, a florist will be getting this flower shop on $200 or £170 spends on absolutely anything and everything March 1st to March 10th. But that's enough for the promos. Again, if you want more detail on them and a closer look at the set and the two poly bags, go check out my rumors of releases. Or right now, you can check them out on lego.com. But let's get into the sets because there is a lot we have to cover. So once again, I am in the bottom corner of your screen because... Rather than trying to get close-up looks at everything, we'll be doing it for certain sets, but for the majority, we're just going to be showing you the images on lego.com. You can find this page by going to the new Lego section on lego.com. This is on all lego.coms. It's not region locked or anything, but of course, this is going to be my thoughts and opinions on all the sets coming out today. And we start off with a creative classic box, which... I know we all want to get ahead to the Animal Crossing sets. They do look really good, especially this one on my screen. But we'll start off with the classic sets because Lego have started posting for Easter for, I think they did it for Valentine's as well, in the reward section, which is part of the Lego Insiders program. It's free to join. If you're not joined, you really might as well be, especially for two sets on this list. We'll get to a bit later, but they've started posting instructions that are able to be built with bricks in the classic boxes now you don't need the classic boxes there are very few pieces that come exclusive to the classic box in fact the only pieces that i found personally to be exclusive to a classic box i'm not sure if they actually come in any other set but they're these nice opalescent translucent two by four bricks you get four of them in one of the slightly older classic boxes come out in the last few years but it's not coming out today so Sometimes these classic boxes are really good to pick up and especially the vibrant creative brick box. It looks brick based. There are no doors, no windows. There are eyes and other little tolls for animals, but it's mostly bricks. If you want to improve your mock building, my number one tip is to pick up a creative box. And especially if you can find the one with these opalescent bricks in, these will definitely come useful for something. I just don't know it yet. But now we've got that out of the way on to Animal Crossing. Now, my fiance has her eyes on two or three of these and I think I'll cover them first. First off, we've got Bunny's Outdoor Activities. I do really like this one. Not only does it come with a few animals like the spider there and a butterfly, which sort of just brings together the world of Animal Crossing, but we get a few trees, a few different trees. We do get a bunch of tools that you'll be carrying around. I think this white square, this white brick down here is some sort of radio. I'm not too sure. We've got some marshmallows roasting over a campfire, a nice tent which you start off in before you're building your own house. And as I said, with a classic creative box, if you wanted to mock together a house, something like that is going to be quite handy to brick one together. But it sets the scene for Animal Crossing. You've got the berries in the tree. You've got a really cool Technic feature at the back. We get to jump over the lake, which is one of the features of Animal Crossing. It's a game I haven't played for ages, but... It's one of the things that you look at and you just know that is from Animal Crossing. And of course, comes with Bunny, which is the first of our minifigures. I've got a video coming out for my licensed CMFs, which is probably going to be in about a week because today I will be picking up one of the brand new Star Wars sets, which 
I am definitely going to make a ton of videos on, so stay tuned for that. But you will find out that I am a big fan of custom molded heads. I do like the Lego default head, especially when it comes to humanoid characters. But when it comes to animals or any other sort of creature, it really has to be molded. And all of the Animal Crossing minifigures, you do get Maple, which is an exclusive to the polybag. Which is why I definitely want to pick it up because they go for about three, three pound fifty here, and it'd be great to see it with a Lego magazine just thrown in for free. But it is definitely a great poly bag to pick up, and so far I have reviewed more or less every single poly bag. I think the only one I'm yet to review is the Duplo Duck, which, if I'm honest, I'm gonna have to pick up some point this year, but I'll probably leave that right to the end, and it'll probably be the last that I pick up as. I don't have any Duplo bricks, but them videos are up here. Moving on to the next Animal Crossing set, Nook's Cranny and Rosie's House. This is a double whammy. You get the two houses in there. It's not the only set with two minifigures. We have Captain's Island boat tours, and we also have Isabella's house visit, which of course comes with Isabelle. Like this set comes with Nook and Rosie, but again, great minifigures. Julian is the only other one I'm missing and my fiance does like Nook's Cranny, Isabella's House and this camping adventure down here because they all are straight from the game. They are ideas taken and you look at the other two, Captain's Island's Boat Tours is a little similar but it looks like the Sonic set that came with Amy and Tao. Me's Animal Rescue I think that was called and they've added some umbrella, some deck chairs. It takes a bit more away. I do like the trees, but it doesn't scream Animal Crossing. If this was the only one that came out in the wave and you weren't told what theme it was, the minifigures, uh, the only thing that really scream Animal Crossing. Take away the minifigures and for all you know, it could be an addition to Mario or Sonic, to be fair, either one of them. But I do like the fact it uses the new Mario basis. So these two sets here I don't think we'll be picking up perhaps we'll be buying the minifigures at some point just to complete the range but the other three sets I'm definitely gonna have to buy perhaps later this year stick around to see my in-hand reviews of these Animal Crossing sets and perhaps we'll create a little island of our own much like we created the diorama with the Sonic sets now moving on to the next sets we have a Harry Potter set they're sort of thrown in and around i think i did this based on when they were announced the newest sets or at least when they were uploaded to the lego website so harry potter's all over the place originally i thought most of these were coming out january because most of them were announced with the january sets but it turns out they were coming out in march and i did correct myself in that video after reviewing pretty much all of them i can't remember if i kept that in or if i haven't so i will give my thoughts on them Hagrid's Hut is really cool. Loads of people are saying, do we really need another Hagrid's Hut? This is Hagrid's Hut from early on in Harry Potter, before he become a professor, before he then upgraded to a double hut. And I'm afraid Fang no longer has a house as Fang is no longer with him. But it is really nice to see an early rendition of Hagrid's Hut. And that is something I think that the Harry Potter wave has absolutely nailed for today. They've done a lot of sets that we haven't really got much of before, if at all, and they're really nice additions to the plethora of Harry Potter sets that are still on LEGO store shelves. Speaking of sets that are still on store shelves, because of the success of last year's May release of the MIDI Scout LEGO Star Wars Super Star Destroyer, we've got another three MIDI Scout ships, starting off with the Invisible Hand. It looks like a great model. It is a bit of a shame we didn't get a figure. We could have got a nice tanned Grievous rather than the white minifigure that we've already got. Or perhaps even an updated Palpatine. Could have even got a Count Dooku. A Count Dooku would have been amazing for this ship. Of course, it's not Dooku's ship. It's Grievous's ship. But Dooku is dueling on the ship at the start of Revenge of the Sith. And that's what it's from. One of the best features from this ship is you can break it in half and have them fly in half a ship and recreate another happy landing. But but that is, again, the first of three. The second one is the Tantive, which these all supposedly have a hidden scene on the inside. So I'll leave that for when you're building it. But it's really nice that they've included that again into another MIDI Scout ship. And we've also got the Millennium Falcon, which is a remake of a set that came out 10 plus years ago. But it's really nice that they've updated it and used some of the new bricks 
like this countersunk round dish dome piece that has enabled the cockpit to sit flushly on the front rather than using the cone piece they used to and the front of the cockpit sticks out by a tile. So I don't think I'll be picking up the Falcon. I definitely want to part it out because I've already got a few of these back pieces. So I'll only need to buy all of the other printed pieces. The invisible hand, I'm definitely tempted to buy it because as you can see, the Falcon 75 quid, the Tantiv 70 quid, the invisible hand is only 47. I'm not sure only 47 is quite acceptable because it is still 47 quid. And again, I wouldn't say that's cheap when you've got a bunch of sets for 20 quid, but it's definitely quite reasonable for one of these more adult themed sets. And it does look really, really nice. It's not too different in scale, I don't think, to something like the Tantive or the Falcon, but obviously they've just used a bunch of less pieces. It'd be really nice if it's mostly brick built in there, though. I have a feeling to support that structure, especially in ships like the Tantive, you're probably going to get quite a few Technic bricks, like the Malevolence that is sitting just behind me. I don't know if you can really see it in... Th it's just up there if you can see it. Now, on to a set I'm really excited to get my hands on, boarding the Tantive Four. Now, this set not only comes with six minifigures as part of the set, but a bonus minifigure in Arc Trooper 5s, marking the first of the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars minifigures. You can see right next to we actually have our second, so I'll get them out of the way. Darth Malak is our second minifigure. We're meant to be getting at least three more. Now, I've seen even LEGO say that we will be getting six minifigures, but they're only listing five on their site, so... I'm wondering if the Visual Dictionary counts as one of the extra minifigures, like when we got the 20th minifigures, that Visual Dictionary at the time, or I think that might have been the character encyclopedia, came with an old version of Luke Skywalker, again from early on in Star Wars, much like the other minifigures, but didn't come with the 20th anniversary on his back. So I'm wondering if we're getting the same, we're getting another exclusive minifigure that is... A part of this collection, but just without that 25th anniversary base plate. But the Tantive looks great. It comes with six minifigures, as I've said. Vader, two troopers, Antilles, and two rebel troopers. And the Tantive build itself does look really cool. Could it have been a bit of a lesser build and probably taken a bit away from the price? Perhaps it could have been a smaller build, but I don't really think for seven minifigures you'd be taking much away from the price. As I said, with Snow White's Cottage in my rooms and releases, that averaged out to about £20 per minifigure. And for the big sets, that's sort of what they work out to be, especially as a limit for minifigures. So I know we get about three plus however many droids, if you'd like to count them as minifigures in battle packs, or even just the four minifigures for about 15, 18 quid, I think they are now. But when we're getting seven minifigures for a 50 quid set, that is quite nice. I wonder how they count minifigures, because of course the troopers, the rebel troopers have been in sets. They're not new pieces. Antilles is indeed a new minifigure. And I guess fives is probably playing into that price a bit. But I feel like when troopers and when certain characters like Vader, like Mando are added, they're just added as a bonus minifigure. It's sort of nothing for Lego just to whack another one in because of how many they've already put out. It's just such a common figure that they don't really add it to the price. So when you look 50 quid and you're getting Antilles and Fives, new minifigures, so that's about 40 quid. It does look quite about right. And that still goes for the 330 second battle pack, for instance. We get a few 330 second troopers and then we get Captain Vaughn, who's really the only new one i suppose you could say they've got helmet holes so they are all new minifigures but captain vaughn's the only really new minifigure so that 20 quid price tag sort of adds up if we're going to the 501st and we are just going to go to every set now we're not this will be the last one i promise but we got a new leg piece with the printed on karma we also got a new officer torso i believe that was the only one and a new heavy helmet which is basically one new minifigure. Even though we got two of the helmets, it's only enough printing to make one new minifigure. So I guess the prices are perhaps for new minifigures rather than minifigures in general. But that is not the case with R2-D2 because we've only got Malak and the R2-D2 is the one that we've been getting pretty much in all sets and we'll probably get for every set going forward. It is the one with the printed back detail, which is very nice. 
The R2-D2 itself is quite nice because the other two models we've got of R2 have been much, much bigger than this one. In fact, they've probably been about double the size, at least half on top of this model, which means this does take away from some features, perhaps not to the first one that was mostly brick built, but to the last one at least, but just makes it more affordable for people that want an R2-D2 that lines up with a BD-1 or any of the other buildable droid collections. We've now had BB-8, we've had DO, and we're expecting a droid cut later this year. But as I said, we've also got the Falcon, and that ties up the five Star Wars sets coming out today, and it's not even May 4th yet. Now, we do have a few different rovers. This, again, I did cover for my January 1st releases, and it's still not out yet. If you really want to see more of this, then definitely check out that video. And we do have a few Duplo sets. I think this is one of two that are coming out today, so stay tuned to get a glimpse of that. But I'm not a big fan of Duplo, and honestly, there's not really much else to talk about it. But what there is to talk about is this set for the Capybara that comes with it. Again, the set itself isn't too much to say. It's a jewellery box and a photo frame. And that is really all there is. The flower pot that we'll see in a minute has a really cool interior design. But besides that, you get Mirabelle, you get a capybara. And this new capybara piece, hopefully we get one in a Lego City set, perhaps a zoo or something, because that would be really cool to get. But I don't really think we'll see it in any other set. So... It'll be quite a pricey piece on Bricklink, but definitely one I'll be keeping my eye on. And we also have a bunch of Ninjago sets, which again, like the Animal Crossing sets, still haven't come out. We've been waiting for a while, not as long, but we have been waiting for a while. And what you'll notice with the Ninjago sets is they've moved from their January sort of mechy wave. And I did say in that video that the Ninjago designers did say there are different waves, different themes for Ninjago within the giant theme of Ninjago coming out at different intervals in this year so january we saw the mechs and now for march it seems it's all about dragons and as i said with the frozen duplo set we now have mac at the race which is a car set which has sort of come out of nowhere in terms of we don't have any other car sets and i know loads of people are asking for a lightning mcqueen speed champions which Honestly, it would be really cool to get McQueen. Perhaps we can even get Francesco and a few of the other cars, especially from the later movies where it's more about, well, I guess they're all about racing. We could even get a Hudson from the first movie. I never remember names, but I'm sure you know the cars that I'm talking about. And as I said, for Isabella's Flower Pot, we will be taking a closer look at this because if we have a look at the actual inside to the Flower Pot, you can see there's a whole, I guess, bedroom or room that does definitely have a bed in. So bedroom works inside of the pot. And not only that, it's a great botanical line. We've seen it with the Piranha Plant. The Piranha Plant is honestly a really good set. Under the Mario theme, Isabella's Flower Pot should really belong in the botanical theme. But because it's got Isabella and the room on the inside, likewise, with the frame and the jewellery stand that we just saw. It should really belong in more of the dots theme, but it's come over to Disney to Disneyfy it up and not only comes with a nice range of different plants, but also some miniature plants as well. You can see this plant here on the screen is represented in Lego form, and I don't think it's a new piece. It looks like the pumpkin piece with a flower on top, but either way, it's just really nice to get. And we also have a few new Spider-Man sets. Now, these are aimed at a younger audience, I'd say, than the January ones. Of course, January was mostly Venomized. I think we got a War Machine mech somewhere in there, which, honestly, I'd love to have seen a Venomized mech rather than a Venom mech. Now, we could have got a Venomized Spider-Man, which I think is something we've still not got, a cross between actual Spider-Man and Venom, which would be Really interesting as that sort of plays into Spider-Man 3, the original Tobey Maguire one, of course. And then we got the Spider-Man car, which comes with a Venomized Green Goblin, which I'm still yet to pick up. And then we also have the Venomized Doc Ock, which was the cheaper £9 set, which is currently in my Lego City behind me. Now, we sort of got these same things here. We've got the cheaper set, the Drill Spinner Vehicle, which comes with a little Miles Morales. I say little because they've all got the medium legs that do bend but are definitely shorter than minifigure but you can definitely switch these out if you want the full minifigure and we also get a little electro with it now 
we take a step up for the Spidey vs. Green Goblin at $17.99. I guess this is more of the mechs that we got with Venom with War Machine. And that comes with Spidey, Gwen and Green Goblin. Again, a bit smaller and it does come with some of the Spider-Man bombs, which are printed. A bit different to the pumpkin pieces that we normally get. But don't fear, there are pumpkins on the wings as flick fire missiles, which are really cool to still be getting rather than the stud shooters, I guess, because they're aimed at younger Lego fans. They had to go with a few of the bigger pieces. And then we've got the biggest set, which is the Spidey Web Spinners Headquarters and comes with Team Spidey, represented by Spider-Man, Miles, Iron Man and Gwen. So you're getting an Iron Man on top of the other two, but really it'd probably be better getting the other two if you really fancy the minifigures. Because we also get two, I guess, villains for it. That looks like Modoc from the, I guess, most recently from the Ant-Man movie. I know he's not from Ant-Man, but that's what he's shown up recently in. But this is Zola, which I'm not a big enough fan of Marvel to get that reference. I'm not quite sure where Zola... It sounds like the guy that was on the TV, but again... This isn't a Marvel video, it's Lego, so I'm not really sure who that is. But on to Harry Potter, which has some surprises. We've already seen Hagrid's Hut, and as I say, this time they're releasing a bunch of sets that aren't necessarily anything new for the Harry Potter wave. I know everyone's expecting a reboot of Hogwarts. We've just got the modular one, so now I'm not quite sure what's next. It would be really nice to get a few of the other buildings in Harry Potter and perhaps a modular king's cross which comes with a different scene from any scene with the hogwarts train and you can just build up the carriages for a giant hogwarts express but we really don't know what's coming for harry potter but today we've got a boathouse which we will be taking a closer look at these harry potter sets because they are really cool i personally am not a massive fan of harry potter but this boathouse comes with a great selection of minifigures for 31.99 now it is an updated McGonagall. The dress printing is a lot, lot nicer than the last one we got of that. So that's already one minifigure. And then we also get the plain torsos for the students before they've arrived to Hogwarts and been dedicated a house, which is very nice no matter what sort of Hogwarts build you're building, because there's always bound to be some new students arriving every single year. And so we're getting Harry, Neville, Hermione and Dean Thomas, who is the character set behind Hermione. You can switch out their heads, their hair and really make any students you'd like. You could even put yourself in Hoggles as a first year. And I think that's really cool, though. McGonagall does come with a printed piece. I'm pretty confident in saying it's a printed piece because it shows McGonagall holding it. And they tend not to do that with stickers with, of course, Harry, Neville, Dean and Hermione's name on it. On top of this, the sets also come with a collectible wizard portrait, which would look great on any sort of staircase you're building with all the portraits that you see and even a slot to put it in just at the top of this boat tower. And these two clips do attach to all of the other Harry Potter sets. You can see them just here on the Forbidden Forest. and. I'm not sure if the Castle Owlery has it, but it does come with plentiful owls, another portrait, and some really cool minifigures. And then we've also got this, I guess this is sort of a midi scale, but it's not midi as in micro to minifigure. It's more minifigure to actual real life midi, so a not quite midi scale headwig, which sits on the privet drive sign. And also comes with a trunk full of a bunch of accessories like the photo that we got in a CMF a few years ago, I'm pretty sure, of Harry with his parents. That might have just been Harry's parents, but I'm pretty sure it's a similar, if not the same, photo. Recreated, reprinted here, which we're seeing with a lot of the recent CMFs. A few of the pieces are being whacked in sets, which is a nice way of LEGO to cater to both audiences. People that want it will eventually get it in a set if they didn't pick up the older CMF. But if you picked up the older CMF, you also really don't need to buy the new set. And I think that is the end. I think I'm right in saying that is the end of all the Harry Potter sets. But there are some really good sets like this Creator 3-in-1 Fox, which I've only just realised you can actually flick through the images on this screen. So that will save us much more time than trying to boot up a load of these because this has three builds. It's a 3-in-1 
and you can slightly see there we've gone over it in my rumors and releases when it was announced you can also build an owl and a squirrel which honestly it shouldn't be a surprise at this point creator sets have absolutely smashed it all three builds could have been the main build for the set it's just the fact the fox uses the most pieces they all look as great as each other and there's nothing really more to be said we've got the solar system which lego posted a clip of this spinning and it looks amazing i'm not sure if they'd have the clip on the website i think it's only the images but if i can find it for you i will have it on screen and as you can hopefully see it's just really great the earth spins around the sun with the moon spinning around the earth which just ties into a nice space set and gives a good example for kids how the solar system works and it's the second time we've got this model because we had a galileo gift with purchase that had a similar model in like two three bricks now we've got a few different technique builds coming out we have a kawasaki ninja h2r motorbike we also have a mclaren electric formula race car whilst they are pretty good they're also quite expensive you're mostly paying for the brands because if this was to come out unsponsored and just be a lego build it'd probably be like half the price so i can't say it interests me but at the same time there are a few of these which are nice mostly though at the speed champion scale but we can't skip over stitch we got a brick heads a month ago we're getting a buildable stitch today and stitch does look really cool it's definitely more of a display piece than a play piece it doesn't seem to be too moldable there don't seem to be many hinges but they've sacrificed that for the detail and stitch has also been given a hawaiian shirt which does look really cute now as i said there are a bunch of speed champions and i think i'll just showcase them on the screen because i'm not too interested in any of them i do prefer cars that are six bricks wide and there is one coming up which hopefully we see a bit more of because they tend to fit a lot easier they fit better with the lego city road plates and whilst i understand eight bricks is much easier to get all this detail in and especially when they are unlicensed well they're licensed but they're car brands rather than actual movie references eight bricks is just easier to work with but it's not my cup of tea now what is really cool is the talking sorting hat and that's right it talks the lego bricks actually talk if you can listen carefully enough you can hear the lego bricks whispering well not quite the lego bricks exactly but there is one lego brick that they've introduced with 30 plus different sounds and every time you pull down the top of the hat or i think there's actually a mechanism underneath but the only way i've seen it is people pulling down the top of the hat and it makes a sound but not just any sound you've got the sorting hat from the movie talking to you designating you to a certain house dependent on whose head you put it on the hat can actually fit on your head i wouldn't recommend letting go of it i'd recommend keeping two hands on it at all times otherwise you're just asking for a disaster but it's really cool that the hat itself does speak to you and not only looks good on display it has some functionality i'll be interested to see how long the sound brick actually lasts whether it does so many sounds and i guess that's only one thing they'll find out in the future but it'd be really cool seeing the sound brick with some other builds and especially with the hedwig and horn tail that we've got if they could try and work the sound brick into that so that every time you flap the wings you get a squawk of an owl a roar of a dragon this sound brick is honestly new grounds for lego and i'm excited to see what they put it in now we're coming up to the final third of the video this is the final page as you can see on the bottom we are on page one which is the newest releases i realize this is meant to be from old to new yet star wars was pretty recent and it's only just been announced so it just goes to show what they're sitting on and what lego already have ready to announce because this is ordered from when they were added to the website rather than when they were announced the site doesn't exactly know when lego announces things just when they get added to the site so star wars has been waited on for ages and we've seen a lot of these as i say alongside the january releases and they sat on star wars i guess star wars does better when there's more hype for it so they release them just before the sets are actually going out about a month before as i said my last rumors and releases well no longer my last one but the one for january to february 
came out the day that the Star Wars sets were announced. So there must be some plan of releasing Star Wars sets a month early and fans are still excited enough to buy the sets, which let's be honest, I'd definitely pre-order a few of these to pick up on day one. So perhaps that is Lego's plan all along. But we've got another few speed champions. The center one does look really cool for any F1 fans. I can see this being a very, very popular set. It's a bit bigger than the speed champions, I'd include it under the line, it's more of a massive speed champions because it's mostly brick built which is really nice because we also get that center minifigure that there's just no way we'd get if this was a Technic build. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with a Technic version around the same price later on because there's definitely some Technic car collectors that would prefer a Technic build but at the same time it'd be nice to see a few other builds with their drivers in this style for some other historic figures but after you've done Senna there's really nowhere else to go but as I was saying with the six brick wide build we do have the flying Ford Anglia which we have on our display pinned above the night bar so it looks like it's flying from the recent privet drive set which is no longer out and will cost you quite a bit of money to pick up because there are a few different rare minifigures in that and I believe all of them were probably exclusive to the set. But we are getting the Flying Ford Anglia again with Scabbers, Hedwig, Ron and Harry. A few updates to the design. Honestly, if you have the Privet Drive set, you'd definitely be more worth picking apart that one and adding a few different upgrades because besides the 6x6 white tile that is probably the hardest to get your hands on, the rest of them are quite common pieces. Again, it might be a bit hard in this colour and actually it looks like there is a brand new piece for this set. So we will have a look at this one because as you can see this piece here does exist in Lego. But as you can hopefully see on your screen it has a bunch of grill holes in. Now on this image for the car and promotional images are sometimes wrong. The clone battle packs have thicker markings than they tend to and sometimes there are minifigures merge fruit chairs the ninjago says tend to have the clip pieces for the arms of the mechs and stuff like that either misplaced or completely missing and the dinosaur set that i recently picked up i picked up one of the main reasons was for these cool extenders that we've only really seen with the star wars mechs and certain bionicle figures and they weren't actually in the set at all which i completely forgot to touch upon i'll leave an image on the screen circling the piece that's missing but as you can see, this is a completely flat piece, which might be a completely new mold for Lego because once again, the old piece that we used to does have these grill markings in and I'm pretty sure we haven't seen it before. It might have been introduced in a few other sets that I've just not been too keen at looking at. But I'm pretty sure this is a new piece and it looks like we're getting at least four of them in this set. So Perhaps it is worth picking up the set after all. But back to cars, we have another really big Technic car. I mean, this does look like it is going to be sizable. If I were to review this, I think I'd need a larger desk. But of course, big price tag, 190 quid. So I'm not sure if it's worth it. But if you're a fan, I'm sure you'll definitely find the money for it. This is definitely more for a formula enthusiast rather than a Lego collector. Because again, these are probably if not printed pieces this comes with a very big sticker sheet i really hope they're printed pieces but i just don't see a casual lego fan picking this up they'd probably go for something like the mclaren formula race car which is a bit smaller than the senna car but i see them lining up pretty closely so you can have a whole formula one collection here and it does come with a mclaren suited minifigure which you will not find hamilton in because he's coming over to ferrari and I don't follow Formula 1 anymore, it just got a bit too funky with the rules recently, but I used to be a big Ferrari fan, so I'm very happy he's coming over to Ferrari. On to Ninjago, we do get one other mech, which as I said, it's mostly dragons now. I guess they're going to overlap a little bit. I think we might have got a dragon in with the January set, unless again I was mistaken and it was actually coming out in March. But we do get a Lloyd Elemental Power mech, which does look quite nice. It's definitely more of a samurai styled mech than we're seeing with the others. But £18, three minifigures. I really wish we'd get some more 
mechs with multiple minifigures now as we can see there are a few more dragon builds dragons mechs they sort of seem to have merged so perhaps we'll get more of a dragon focus theme later on in the year but it's definitely more dragon focus now especially with all the miniature dragon sets that have come out perhaps that's why they've released a few mechs in this way because they bought the dragons out in january but we're getting another underwater creative three in one all three of these builds are underwater scenes, so there's not much too different about them. But I really like the fact that you get in one, two, three, four, five different underwater creatures. The crab has been done before. Same with these two fish in the background. I'm pretty sure Lego have done a seahorse, but perhaps not in this style or this recent. So you're really getting the seahorse and the turtle. But if you've got any other underwater builds like the whale three in one, like the fish tank three in one, this will go quite nicely with them, and especially if you've got a fish tank. I don't recommend putting your Lego submerged underwater around fish, but I've seen so many people do it with Lego sets, especially the massive old Pirates of the Caribbean ship, which looks really, really cool. But it'll be a nice addition to your fish tank, and I'd probably be doing the same if we had one. But this carousel ride reminds me of a gift with purchase, and you can see with the box, and even the set number 40714, the four O's tend to be more of a gift with purchase. I'm not sure if the last three numbers are any different, but I feel like this was meant to be a gift with purchase that they decided to release as a set anyway. Perhaps they had so many, or perhaps the gift with purchases are looking to be released as sets, and this is a tester for that, which would be interesting to say the least, because Gift with purchases tend to sell out pretty quickly and if they released them as sets and actually restocked them later on in the month that'd be an interesting way to pick it up and it's still sort of first come first served but you will not have to spend that certain threshold and instead would just be spending what the set is worth. Now it does say it's coming soon, this may have been a mistake all along from Lego. I really do hope this is released as a set because it gives people a chance to get their hands on the banana that aren't a fan of marvel or friends and it's a really nice piece i've whacked it with my mario kart diorama because it's just a banana peel what else could it go with but there's some really nice pieces and it does look like the carousel pieces are all printed you even get a bird on top and three minifigures it's a great set for that price now we are getting a dojo for ninjago there's always a big dojo or some sort of temple like build it looks cool it doesn't look too special considering all the different dojos and temples we've seen in the past but i'm sure if you collect them and are a fan of ninjago you'll be happy that it sticks closer to 100 pound than the 150 pound we're tending to get for the bigger lego star wars build so it is quite nice but i'm sure you'll be going for this dragon shrine instead i've seen so many people build and review it and i am never going to get tired of watching it because not only does it come with one, two, three, four, five, six minifigures, but you could get rid of the minifigures and it's a great build in itself. You've got the blossom tree coming out, filling this top left, which I try and do with my dioramas. What they've done here is started off with the dragon shrine and you've got a nice waterfall coming out of the dragon's mouth. And originally this would have just been a bunch of blank space. In fact, I can crop it out on screen just to show you. But they've added in this blossom tree to fill out the gap you'll definitely fill out your display as well and makes use of that and as you can see you can even pose minifigures on it so you can add a few of your own custom minifigures you can add a few other ninjago minifigures you can really do a lot with this set and it does look really cool now we're coming up to the end here we do have the prisoner of azkaban minifigures which is a nice collection of minifigures because like i say with the rumored star wars brick heads where we're getting a minifigure that doesn't quite fit in there and has definitely been thrown in because of how popular the minifigure actually is, but in Brickhead's form. We're getting a collection of minifigures from different scenes of the movie, I guess. You could probably tie up the three on the right as the same scene, but they are all from their own scenes in the movie. At least three different scenes from Prisoner of Azkaban. And it's nice because you get an array of minifigures. If you love the movie, you can get them. But if you only want a certain few, I guess Lego are making you pay a bit more for the other minifigures. Now, I remember talking down on the Professors of Hogwarts minifigure set because they whacked that in as a stocking filler, which if you watched my video, you'd know 
it sort of does work as a stocking filler if well i guess you can watch that video to find out but this is 45 pound for five figures and they're all full-size brick heads i keep calling them figures brick heads i guess brick heads are some sort of lego figure but they are all full-size brick heads so you're technically getting one of them for half price which is quite nice and there are quite a few pieces mostly not printed of course you've got the eyes which are typical for any brick heads but it doesn't look like the patronus comes with any printed pieces even the dementor doesn't seem to come with any printed pieces i'm not quite sure as we don't get 360 with these images but harry has the blood stain on his shirt which is really interesting they printed because when lego released a thin minifigure the blood on the helmet was left out i don't even think he came with any sort of helmet so it's interesting that they've printed the blood on his shirt, but perhaps Lego, because it's a Harry Potter reference, have decided that the accuracy of the minifigure just needs that extra detail. You've also got the scar on Harry's head and the shirt that Sirius is wearing under his jacket. And that, by the looks of it, are the only three printed. There might be the odd one or two other printed, like Sirius does seem to have some detail on his collar there that might be a separate printed piece but for the most of it there's only a handful of stickers which is really nice to see in Brickheads if you know I'm not a fan of stickers in Brickheads or printed parts sorry these are all going to be printed parts because I think there are definitely some things that Lego can just brick out instead and that's not to say they haven't tried Lego have definitely tried to use pieces to represent all these characters but the Ahsoka Brickheads is one of my favourite because you've got the printing for the face details, but the tendrils, the long head towels, and the torso for the Ahsoka brick heads is completely brick made and they did a marvellous job. Now, I'm not going to go over Snow White's Cottage or the Medieval Town Square because I have been recording for nearly an hour and I think this video has gone on long enough, but there is one last set we will be looking at and you might have just seen the duck poly bag that I'm still yet to pick up. Lego are just taunting me now with it. But this is a pull back Mercedes F1. And it's only £20. To be fair, for a toy pull back vehicle, you're probably looking at spending about that much. So it's really cool to see that they've added a pull back feature to a car that is known for its speed and for zooming off. And if you know anything about the Lego pullback features, they definitely zoom off. I have had experience with two of their older pullbacks. There was one they did for a Technic anniversary. I think it was a car they did for 10, 20 years of something Technic. And they've also done one for Toy Story, which my brother had growing up. So I can assure you they'll definitely be zooming off in this F1. And you could technically get a Lego minifigure here, though. I think the Technic scale is perfect for the old Technic minifigures, which aren't really minifigures, but they were Lego minifigures at the time, and they definitely work with the more modern sets, so if you can pick a few of them up on Bricklink, I'm sure that will go really well with this set. But that is all for today's video of March 1st releases. Don't forget there are some gift with purchases coming up, and some make and take events at your nearest Lego source, so be sure to check out my rumours and releases, subscribe for more awesome Lego content, and may the bricks be with you, always.